<laughs> so here we go again, talking in 2020 about a guitar pedal that was first introduced about 55 years ago. A pedal with many quirks and many disadvantages. A pedal that is definitely not for everybody. A pedal that by all means should be obsolete by now. But even to this date, when done right, a fuzz is all you need. And the question is, why do we even talk about it anymore? For me, the fascination started as soon as I learned about guitar pedals in general. Now, let me start by saying that uh, I really have an old man's taste about music and music gear in general. So for me, I think that I can break down my interest in this pedal into three big categories. First of all, of course, the sound. The second one being uh, the musical influences that I have and the third one being the question how can such a simple device made almost by accident all those years ago still be a mainstay in guitar music in general. So, let's start with the sound. Fuzz in general, but especially germanium fuzz phases of which I'm talking about today, can be notoriously difficult to set up and get a good sound out of. They do not like being played into a clean amp, they are very picky about where you put them on a pedal board, and not to mention that their sound can change depending on the temperature of the room you're playing in. But if you find the right combination, which mostly means a fuzz phase into an already overdriven loud tube amp, you will feel it. Okay, about that whole overdriven tube amp. Yeah, that uh, didn't exactly work out with my current amps. So I spent the whole day yesterday trying to figure out a setup that would work better with a fuzz. So I decided to use my trusty twin reverb kind of amp at a loud volume but with the help of my King of Tone clone. So the bass sound that I got was something like this. This is the amp on itself. And this is with a pedal on which is the bass sound for this whole setup. So yeah, I use the King of Tone as a way of uh, making this slightly overdriven sound. My amp is making some funny noises right now. And uh, this was the platform upon which the whole fast sound was based. In a weird way to me, the fast sound despite being so compressed and heavily distorted is the next logical step from the sound of an overdriven tube amp. It just has a fullness and an organic quality to it that I just haven't heard in other distortion pedals. The last thing about the sound, but certainly one of the most famous qualities of this pedal, is its relationship with your guitar's volume control. By controlling the volume on your guitar, you can go from a clean sound, which to my ears is better than what my amps can do on their own, to a full singing sustaining distortion. And that on its own is something truly amazing to me. It's almost as if you have another instrument, something that is reacting to your playing and to your guitar on your pedal board. face for the purpose of this video is that the experience you have when playing really loud with a fuzz is something not easily conveyed through microphones or speakers. However, I will do my best to give you a sense 
of what it feels like. Now, with regards to the influence that uh, this pedal has had on guitar and on music in general since it was introduced, I will not uh, drag out this part a lot because frankly it's just not possible to have not heard this pedal in action when listening to blues or rock music over the past 60 years. And well, I think I don't even have to name some of the most famous guitarists that have used this kind of pedals. What got me really intrigued was when I found out how simple this circuit really is. It is based around just two transistors and while it is really easy to build, very few people seem to have done it right. And that I think is due to the fact that because this pedal has so few components, they seem to be very sensitive on how they interact with each other. I found out that for myself quite recently when I built uh, my very first pedal based on this circuit. In conclusion, this ancient finicky pedal is something truly special to me. And I just haven't found anything else yet that can compare to it. But who knows, that day may eventually come. I know this video is really subjective because I know a lot of people that don't like fast pedals. And I would really like to hear your thoughts, opinions or experiences with such pedals. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Dalam and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.